Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Paul once again. Thank you for taking your time this evening to visit our channel and watch this video. As always, we invite you to visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net, where we have posted hundreds of videos already ranging different topics. So please visit us and explore our videos. We discuss only the most important topics for USMLA. We don't uh, discuss all kinds of filth that clutter your mind and make you inactive and unproductive on the day of your examination. We discuss the topics which are very, very vital. In order, these are the topics you must know, otherwise you fail. Those are the kinds of topics we discuss on these videos. So let us discuss uh, this evening uh, a few things about uh, digoxin. You see digoxin, for example, you got a question like this. Digoxin should not be used in which of the following conditions? A. Heart failure. B. Atrial flutter. C. Atrial fibrillation. D. Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. What is your answer? The answer is Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. In that condition, you should not use digoxin. In all the other three conditions, you can justify its use. In fact, those are the indications for its use. So, digoxin has two very important indications. Those are heart failure due to systolic dysfunction and secondly, atrial fibrillation atrial arrhythmias because in systolic dysfunction because of its positive inotropic effect that means increased contractility digoxin improves the ejection fraction it pumps more blood than we find in heart failure as a result the cardiac output increases and the patient can improve his quality of life. He can increase his daily activities. And it also increases his uh, exercise potential. So that is number one. Secondly, in atrial fibrillation, the most important task is to control the ventricular rate. How can you do that? Just block atrioventricular nod. Just stop those impulses going from atria into the ventricles. So by blocking atrioventricular nod, digoxin can control the ventricular rate in conditions like atrial fibrillation. So those are the two most important points. And when we talk about uh, the indications of uh, digoxin. Now, the second thing when you talk about uh, digoxin is its narrow therapeutic index. Sometimes these patients, they develop toxicity and that could be fatal. And some, in, in some patients actually the toxic dose is actually less than the therapeutic dose. That's why it's very important to, to monitor the dose of digoxin. Whenever you suspect patient has developed a toxicity, just take a digoxin level and be prepared to treat it because digoxin, it produces uh, major electrolyte and uh, arrhythmic and gastrointestinal side effects. Now, a few words about the dose. The most common in majority of patients, you should use between 0 0.1 to 5 to 0 0.25 milligrams per day. That is 0 0.1 to 5 to 0 0.25 milligrams per day. As I said, up to certain point, digoxin use is very, very good. It decreases the mortality rate. But after certain point, it has reverse effect that is it increases the mortality rate so so maintaining the adequate dose is very very important now disoxin it controls the atrial arrhythmias because it has cardioselective parasympathetic mimetic effects as you know sympathetic mimetic system it uh, increases the conduction, whereas parasympathetic mimetic system, it decreases the conduction. So, digoxin, it decreases the conduction, especially AV nodal conduction, 
is blocked is is digoxin has a depressive effect on the av nodal conduction as a result if a patient has already suffering from av block you should not give digoxin that's a that's a very very important point if the patient has atrioventricular block digoxin is contraindicated if the patient has wolf parkinson white syndrome digoxin is contraindicated because digoxin increases the conduction through the alternate abnormal pathways and it ensues a wholly different chaos when you give uh, digoxin to a patient with wolf parkinson white syndrome that's why whenever a patient has wpw syndrome we just don't give it now toxicity visual changes might occur gastrointestinal changes may occur electrocardiographic changes may occur and uh, digoxin it uh, ejects the intracellular potassium into extracellular space as a result in digoxin toxicity we will see hyperkalemia so that's an important point hyperkalemia is seen in digoxin toxicity so whenever you suspect digoxin toxicity you need to do three things number one stop the medication number two prepare with a temporary cardiac pacemaker number three just to give digoxin immune FAB antibodies these immune antibodies they block the actions of uh, digoxin and uh, decreases its toxic effects so let us uh, just um, go through a simple recap digoxin two main indications heart failure due to systolic dysfunction and atrial fibrillation in toxic effects it has a very narrow therapeutic index in the majority of patients we use like 0 0.125 to 0 0.25 milligrams per day up to certain point digoxin increases the uh, it in, it decreases the mortality rate up to certain point but after certain point it increases the mortality rate and whenever you find toxicity you should stop the medication you should use a temporary cardiac pacemaker and then you should give digoxin immune antibodies those are the three most important things you must do and and later you should always think about the indications heart failure and atrial fibrillation atrial flutter you should not use digoxin in av block and wpw syndrome and finally even though digoxin has widespread use you still do not start with digoxin for example if a patient has heart failure you should think other safer drugs like uh, diuretics or ACE inhibitors or beta blockers. They are safer and cheaper to maintain in these patients. So first priority is to use them. And the latter you can actually start with digoxin. So those are the most important points. As always, uh, Feel free to visit our website at www.usmlvideos.net and uh, post your comments. If you feel uh, I left something, just feel free to post them so others can read those comments and uh, get benefited. And uh, our address is www.usmlvideos.net. Thank you and uh, you have a good night.